or about how Merlot w will work. Here's an outline of the presentation. Um, I'm not going to read all my slides to you, but <coughs> this one I will. Uh, we'll talk a little bit, I'll talk a little bit about the history of Merlot. Uh, I'm not sure how familiar people are with the no notion of OER and openness in general. Barbara will give you a tour of Merlot. I'll talk a little bit about the content builder. We'll talk about our web services, which are our interfaces to other web applications. A quick, quick overview about Merlot projects. And if there's time today, Q&A. And if not, as I said, other will be able to do Q&A um, at another time. So you can access, we know you're a, a great partner, and that's with a capital P of Merlot. And I just put this slide up here uh, to show you, if you haven't already, uh, discovered how to access Merlot from your own uh, from your own website, from your own location. Um, Merlot is really renowned for having a repository of learning objects, most of which, as you'll understand in a few minutes, are are can be considered to be open education resources. For the most part, OER means stuff that's free. There is stuff in Merlot that uh, has been contributed. All of it is not free. Some of it is really good, and uh, some people have felt that it's worth putting in there, even though you have to pay for it. In any case, um, the real Merlot's been around a long time. I'll show you that in a moment. And what we have developed is a community of users, and the users have all in common an interest in online pedagogy wherein they can use the Merlot repository of learning objects to help build or help to teach their classes. So the community na nature of Merlot is very, very important. I'm certainly not going to read this, but if you look at the top, at the top bullet, you can see that we started in 1997, and here we are in May 2015. And these are all milestones that took place over these, what is it, 18 years. Uh, today, we have, going to the bottom bullet, we have more than 62,000 learning objects or materials and more than 130,000 registered members of Merlot. Um, so it is an open education resource repository, and you can see the numbers there. That even though uh, we have these uh, these registered members, we have very very many. You're welcome, Sylvie. Bye bye. Somebody needs to mute their microphone. Um, even though we have more than 130,000 registered members, we actually have about 100,000 visits, people who come to Merlot every month who, who essentially search and find materials, etc. Registered members can do things that ordinary uh, visitors can't do, and I think, Barb, you're going to be talking about a little bit about that in a few minutes. But you, everything in Merlot is free. You can come to Merlot, use it, register, etc., and it's all free. Somebody has, could somebody please mute, mute your microphones because it's in conflict with me. Yep, I've got it. I'm, I'm muting as I go. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, all righty. So this is, this is the Merlot homepage, um, and it's, Pretty simple at merlot.org, and um, we redesigned Merlot. We re released a new version of Merlot, this one that you're looking at, in October of 2013. If you haven't been to the Merlot web website, if you had been before that, you would have seen a completely different design. And we came up with this design. It, by very carefully analyzing what people want to do, what people want to see when they come to the website. With a previous design, you'd come there and there were a trillion things you could do and you wouldn't even know where to start. So in this design though, which is mimicked a little bit after Microsoft Windows 8 with the notion of uh, tiles, we've, we analyzed what people do, and we brought to the front page the most popular things. 
So th th this uh, website has really come a long, long way since the uh, last design of Merlot. I keep pushing the wrong button here. So it is a, I called it an open resource, means it's free to access, it's a tool. It's free to access, but I just want to alert you that the code, um, all the software, the Merlot software is not free, it's not open source, it's proprietary to the California State University system. So anyway, in Merlot, we have these things called learning objects. Everything in Merlot can be, can be classified as a learning object. A subcategory of learning objects in Merlot are the free things called OER. Um, and in Merlot, we have open courses, most of which are OER open access textbooks, and that term has an uppercase open access for a, 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 a reason. We have open access journal articles, and then of course we have what I said before is OER. So all of these kinds of things can be found in Merlot, as Barb will show you in a few minutes, but I just want to tell you too, she'll show you that as well, when you search Merlot, you also have the opportunity to search other libraries that at the same time, that have these same sorts of materials in those libraries. <laughs> so let's talk for a moment about what open means. In general, it means free. It does not mean you can do anything you want with it, even if you, if you get it. Um, it. But the third bullet is really the important one for us. It enables us to reuse, recycle, or build on other people's work, material, and expertise. So what that really means is if you find something that is truly open in our repository or anywhere else, you can embed it in a course, usually, depending on the license, then we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, you can embed it in a course, you can use the course, you can take multiple versions of what you find and put them together and build new open things, etc. So open, the word open, though we probably learned it when we were learning our English vocabulary as children, it really has a lot of implications when we talk about it now in terms of, in the context of technology. Here are uh, three categories of open resources. Open source, which is actually just software. Open access, which is a term that applies to publications, textbooks, journal articles, journals. And then something called open education resources. Open education resources can include open courseware, um, open access texts, and these things called learning objects. But when and you see at the very bottom, open source, open access, and OER, those things are not all the same. So the licensing kinds of terms that you might find with open source software, those terms and the kinds of licenses are quite different than the kinds of licenses that you'd find with open access or open education resources. A little more about OER. Oh, you're right, it doesn't work. Uh-oh. Yeah, so we have an animation here and you can't see it. Um, all right, anyway, we'll just go on to the next slide. Yes, animations on PowerPoints don't work in WebEx, unfortunately. Right, Sorry, right, no. right. Um, I guess the most important thing that you can see here is that the term OER was invented uh, in 2002 uh, at this, at this um, symposium, and it has a very formal definition. And in general, here are, the, here are the characteristics. Digitized material offered freely and openly for education, uh, educators, students, etc., to use and reuse for teaching, learning, and research. There are materials that you can freely use and reuse without charge, and they reside in the public domain, that is, you can access them on the internet, but they must have some kind of license that designates how you're allowed to use them. Here's where you find OER. 
on the World Wide Web in Merlot or other similar repositories. You can create them yourself. Barb will show you how you create OERs with our um, web development tool called the Content Builder. Or uh, the fourth one, OERs can be recommended to you by somebody you're working with, a colleague, uh, or another Merlot member. And Barb will talk about uh, our recommender system that we've implemented in the last couple of months in the Merlot system. So uh, unique about our collection, I've already told you the statistics of the first two bullets, but very unique about our system is we have a peer review process and a community of discipline, academic discipline editors who do peer review of the disciplines of the, of the OER in Merlot. The OERs are categorized by discipline, uh, academic discipline. Also, um, we, we have a worldwide base of users, and you can use Merlot many ways in the language of your choice. So as we'll show you uh, shortly, we have users in, that use this thing in Chinese, in Hebrew, in Spanish, etc. And Barb will show you uh, some of how that happens. The things in Merlot, even though we're a higher education oriented kind of uh, project, the OERs in Merlot are categorized by all levels of education. So everything in Merlot is definitely not all just targeted for higher ed. It's free to become a member. And if somebody joins, and Barb will show you how, that, how you do that, if you join, um, and she'll tell you um, that we don't spam anybody. We're a nonprofit. We're a university also. We don't sell the mailing list, et cetera. So uh, joining Merlot really has benefits, and I don't think there's any drawbacks to becoming a member. Um, and the whole of Merlot, our salaries and so forth, and the hosting of the system, et cetera, all of that is paid, most of it's paid for by the California State University system. About, uh, I would guess about 60% of our budget is from them. Uh, and the other 40%, 35% is paid for by partners in our such as your institution. So um, here is a quick look at what, in Merlot, we, we look to see how many uh, full courses there are. We are courses, textbooks, and journals, and you can see these numbers here. Um, they don't add up to the, the 60,000 because there are many other kinds of OER categorized in different ways in Merlot. Barb will show you that too. So I, I talked about um, the uh, licensing of Merlot material. The question is, is if you find something in Merlot or anywhere, how do you know what you're allowed to do with it? And if you're in one country or another country, are you allowed to do things differently, let's say, in, uh, in Mexico than you can in the United States, as you can in Spain? Um, how do you know what you're allowed to do? So um, the very nice thing is that everybody tries to encourage the use of Creative Commons licenses uh, on materials that they create that they wish to share. So if you find things on the World Wide Web that you want to use, you want to hope that there are Creative Commons licenses associated with those things. There are um, six combinations of Creative Commons licenses. Um, that last website, we don't have time to show you that last slide, rather. Um, I don't have time to show you this video. We're going to distribute this, uh, this uh, presentation in PDF form. But if you go to the Creative Commons website or, and or you look at this video, it's, it's really a cool little video on the nature of Creative Commons licensing. In any case, there are six combinations of license, that's all, that you can find about um, OERs that would be posted on the web. And what they have to do with is if you find anything that you want to use, it doesn't matter what the license is, all of them say you have to give attribution to who, whoever is the person or the people that created the material. 
Then the other uh, characteristics of the Creative Commons license are whether or not the originator of the material allows you to use it, reuse it for commercial or not non-commercial purposes, and whether or not you can use it as is or you're allowed to change it. So those three characteristics give you these combinations of six possible licenses that tell you everything about what you want to may or may not do with a discovered uh, material on the World Wide Web. Just one last comment. Um, know that if you're not familiar with the notion of copyright, whether or not there's a, a, a copyright symbol, the person that creates the whatever it is owns the copyright, period. So this is in addition to the notion of copyright. We could do a whole, um, I could do a whole presentation on this subject, but uh, that's not for now. Um, Merlot, uh, we, we are great proponents of Creative Commons. Uh, we, you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a Creative Commons license even on this PowerPoint which says you can take this thing and you can reuse it as long as you don't use it for commercial purposes. And the thing to come away from this presentation with, or one of the things, is when people say open source, if they're using that term correctly, they're talking about software. If they if they use the term open access, it has to do with publications, journal or textbook publications. Um, all the efforts that have to do with uh, affordable textbooks all have to do with the notion of open access textbooks. And finally, uh, this last thing called open education resources. Know that it, but as I kind of implied quickly before, open education resources can include open source software, can include open access publications. So now with having given you that background, I'm going to turn the floor over to Barbara, who is going to give you a tour of Merlot and how to find OERs. Hello, everybody. Uh, normally when I do this part of the presentation, I ask for a show of hands of people who have uh, visited Merlot before, but um, I don't think that's possible. Oh, okay, I see a couple of hands going up, that's great. Yes, you could raise your hand or click the green check either way. Okay, so I see that there are some people, um, there's, a, there's a good amount of people here who have. So as Sorrel showed you before, this is the Merlot homepage. And when we designed this, we, <coughs> excuse me, we designed it to make it easy and kind of stand out uh, right when you get to the, to the homepage exactly the things that, that we see that people are doing in Merlot. And obviously one of the main things that people do when they come to Merlot is search or browse our collection to find what they're looking for. And so we've provided two ways on the homepage to do that. You'll see up in the top right corner just a basic search box. And when I say basic, I mean that you can put in a keyword, but we return uh, results, so if you put in uh, whatever search term you put in, we, we return results for members, materials, uh, peer reviews, comments, anything having to do with the, the items in Merlot, and I'll show you that. The second way here is from our search tile. And by clicking on any of the yellow arrows, uh, triangles, excuse me, on the home page, we'll uh, drop down the menu so you can see exactly what you can do on that page, or you can just click the tile itself. If you, when you click on the search tile, it'll take you to a search page where we provide an advanced search or basic search for materials and members. We provide an easy way for you to just browse the collection uh, of materials and members. Also, you'll see in the bottom left here, search other libraries. Sorrel mentioned that. We have what we call our federated search where at any given time we have uh, anywhere from 15 to 20 different digital libraries that you can search at once, and I'll be showing you a, a screenshot of that. And so you don't have to go out to different libraries to find materials that you're looking for. Keeping in mind, however, that uh, not all the libraries that return the results have the same metadata that Merlot does.
And so this is what we call a hit list. So I put in a search term of software engineering, and I get back this, this hit list that shows me that there are 302 materials that meet my search criteria. Uh, you'll notice for each one of the materials that it finds, it gives you a description and the material type, as well as over in the box on the right that says about this material, we give you the, the quality of the material as of, as of that time. And so you can see that the, there are materials in Merlot that have peer reviews. Uh, they have user ratings where a user has given it a rating of one to five based on using it. People have started, a, there have been two comments made or a discussion started about this particular top material here, the Software Engineering Library. And of the 60, Sorrel mentioned that there was over 62,000 materials in Merlot, and each one of those has what we call a, mer, a material detail page. And on every detail page is a discussion forum that you can discuss that particular material. So people might put in comments about uh, their ease of use with it or how they've used it in a course, and I'll show you that in a minute. What I want to just draw your attention to on the left is um, the way you can refine a search. And so I put in software engineering, and it shows me all the different categories that, that those materials fall into, these, these 302 materials. And I can refine my search by clicking on, say, um, science and technology, and then clicking on engineering, and it will narrow that 302. I can also search by ma material type. Uh, we have uh, 20 different material types in Merlot, animation, simulations, reference material, quizzes, uh, et cetera. And so uh, you can refine your search that way too. If you were looking for a particular member, you could click on members and look at the uh, members that fall into that category of software engineering and refine your search that way as well. And I noticed that there's a chat box here. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask at any time. I, we don't mind the interruptions. We'll be happy. We don't want to get too far ahead and have you not get your information answered. And so this is what we call a material detail page. And so as I said, the, the quality information that you saw on the hit list is transferred here as well. In some cases, you might see a material that has an editor rating instead of a peer review rating. And that indicates that uh, one of our uh, 25 plus editorial boards has looked at the material and they've given it a triage value that translates to an editor's rating. And that means that they've scored it uh, to put into the queue to be re reviewed. So we've got almost 15,000 materials that have uh, editor's ratings that at some point they've been triaged. And in some cases they won't be reviewed, but they've still been given a rating so people know what the, if the value is good or bad. And so you see here in the middle that we've got uh, discussed this material. For the, and again, this is on every detailed page. And if I were to click that, it takes me, drops me down to the bottom of the page where a discussion has been started about this material. And so anybody that uh, wants to participate in this discussion can. And when, if you are the contributor, contributor of a material into Merlot, you can check a box that says if anybody starts a discussion about this material that you're notified. So then you know uh, if you thought it was valuable and other people start talking about it, you may want to see what they're saying. Perhaps they're using it in a way that you weren't using it. And so uh, that's, this is a new feature that we put into Merlot when we released it last year. Uh, we, Merlot doesn't host the materials that are in our collection, except if they were created with the Merlot Content Builder, which I'll explain at the end. We host the metadata, and so we provide all the metadata for material and a link out to that material. Um, and so I showed you the, the search page, and this is our advanced search page. It's quite long, so I'll show you two different, uh, two different uh, views, the top and the bottom. But we, we provide ways for you to find materials in, uh, by either keyword, material type, uh, subject category, whether or not it's a mobile app, uh, if it has a peer review, if it's got uh, all sorts of different metadata. We've got uh, over 25 or 30 different metadata items for uh, each material in Merlot. 
Um, Thoreau's telling me that this page was an animation, so that's why this, this uh, it doesn't look right and I'm covering some of the information, so I apologize for that. The, again, here's the rest of the metadata that you can search. You can search if something is, has a Creative Commons license, if it's, there's a cost involved, uh, all sorts of different ways to, to narrow your search and find exactly what you're looking for in Merlot on our advanced search page. This is our federated search or our search other libraries page where you can select different uh, digital libraries, put in your search term here at the top and click search. And depending on how many you select, it may take longer than 10 seconds, but uh, this is what the results will look like. And so uh, we searched Merlot and we searched OpenStax and it returns tw up to 25 materials for each library that you select and you can just click on each one of these and it'll take you to those 25 materials. Uh, the last thing about search that I want to say is uh, that any search you do in Merlot, so if you go to our advanced search page and you put in uh, biology animations with a peer review and you get your results, you'll notice here at the bottom there's an RSS link and any search that you perform in Merlot can be turned into an RSS feed so then you can continue to get uh, notifications through the RSS feed when materials are added to Merlot that meet that criteria. So um, that's one of my favorite features in Merlot. Sorrel talked about translation briefly and a new feature in Merlot in the last few months is uh, we've switched to a, a Google widget and so any page in Merlot can be translated to whatever language you want. Uh, so in this case, I've selected Chinese, and you can see that the, the page has translated to Chinese. Uh, Sorrel was uh, doing a presentation a couple of months ago, and this came in very handy for him. Um, in addition, we have users of Merlot all over the world, and when they come to Merlot, their browser is usually not set for English. And so we've note, we have provided now a way to let somebody know that they can translate Merlot into their preferred language since we've recognized what language that is in their browser. And along those lines of, of translation and, and foreign languages, uh, we've worked closely, one of our boards is the World Languages Board, and we've worked closely with the editor of World Languages to create a new set of metadata uh, for describing language ability uh, for ESL and EFL materials that are in Merlot. And you'll notice we have two columns here. The CEFR is the European standard for, uh, for describing language ability, and the ACTFL is the American uh, standard. And so if somebody puts in a material into Merlot and specifies that it is an ESL or EFL material, they then have the option to further identify that material with one of these uh, metadata standards. And again, all these different metadata items that are in Merlot are in our advanced search, so you could search specifically for these types of materials if you wanted. And this is a slide just to demonstrate to you that uh, you can translate in Merlot, we support materials in other languages, and you can see that people have put in to Merlot uh, materials that are in other languages for people to access. And again, that's another metadata item in our advanced search that you could search for uh, materials that are in Spanish or Chinese or Arabic or Hebrew or whatever language that you want. Um, you will notice, however, sometimes people confuse the language of the material with the language itself. So, it may be a material about learning Spanish, so they'll select Spanish, but it's not the entire material isn't in Spanish. So um, sometimes you just have to be careful of that. And so I saw some hands up that, that there are people who have come to Merlot and used it, and I'm hoping those people are also members. Uh, as Sorrel mentioned, it's free to use Merlot. Anybody can come to Merlot besides our 131,000 plus members we have over almost 100,000 people uh, that come to it every month just to, to search it without joining. Some of the advantages to joining are that you can contribute materials, comments, uh, learning exercises, 
Uh, you can create bookmark collections or coursey portfolios, which I'll explain. You can also be a peer reviewer or be, and be part of an editorial board. And so there's lots of things that you can do or benefits that you have, not only just joining Merlot as a member, but your institution being a member too. Uh, we have uh, partner-only materials. We have a, uh, a, a leadership library. We have um, all sorts of different benefits for uh, partners and mem member partners. And so for those of you who have not been to Merlot or have not joined, if you go back to the home page up in the top right corner, you'll see a link that says login and register. And at the bottom of that box, it says not a member, register now. And it's a very quick process. We take you just through a few steps. We ask for your job title and, and name and material type. Uh, also what discipline you're in, uh, what your affiliation is, and, and that's all. And like I said, it's very quick and easy. Uh, this is uh, what your profile would look like if you completed every section in the profile. We put, your picture would be different. <laughs> <laughs> um, we provide a way for you to, uh, actually all the information that you see here, you can, create, you can complete as much or as little as you want, and only the fields that you complete is what somebody would see if they come to your profile. But if you completed the entire profile as Sorrel has done here, we provide a way for you to what we call jumpstart your CV, and you can export this entire thing to a, an RTF file. Uh, another benefit of membership here, you can see that uh, this is Sorrel's uh, login, and he's a member of the CSU system, and so he, we identify that on the, the top page here, on the home page, and by clicking that, he's taken to pages that a normal user would not be able to see. And so there are benefits to becoming a member, especially if uh, your institution is a partner, as Georgia is. And so this is our partner benefit page, which replaces the membership page, and you would see a different one when you log in. And so for those of you who have uh, materials that you would like to contribute to Merlot and share with other people, uh, at the top on the menu bar is a link that says add to the collection. There's also a tile on the home page that says add to the collection. And when you go here, um, you can click on the contribute material uh, tile here that will take you to a wizard. And I keep saying we don't ask for a lot of information. When you provide the metadata for contributing a material, it's five steps, and there's only a few things that are required, obviously title and, and URL, the description, the material type, the audience, whether it's uh, K-12, higher education, graduate, professional, and uh, we encourage you to put in as many keywords as possible. That way, uh, people, other people can find the material quickly and easily. And then any extra information that you know, the tech, if there's a technical format, if it's an app and it only runs on iOS or Android, or if there's Creative Commons license, or if there's a cost, all those things you can put into when you describe the material and contribute it to Merlot. And so these are just some of the, the steps of the wizard that I've mentioned. And then again, I've shown you this, and uh, this is a, uh, a, screen sh a shot of just the detail page. Um, I mentioned peer review process and editorial boards and triaging and uh, Oops, did I go too far? Yeah. These are uh, a list of our current boards. We're always in the pro always looking for uh, new editors and editorial boards. If you feel there's a subject category that's missing here, our editorial boards, as I said, they're responsible for curating the collection in their discipline, triaging materials, doing peer reviews. Each editorial board is made up of, of a group of peer reviewers. Some have as few as three or four, some have 30 or 40. It just depends on how many materials. Business is probably one of our biggest ones. And they're responsible for doing the triage. We usually have uh, at least two people doing individual reviews and there's a composite review that is posted. We really haven't touched much on the difference between, uh, oh, I thought this said Google. Uh, Merlot versus a journal. Do you want to talk about this for a second? Sure. Um, with uh, 
academic journals, there's usually an editor, an editorial board, and a world of peer reviewers, and they are all reviewing journal articles. This is different because uh, our editorial boards and their reviewers, while they're organized in the same fashion, they don't do research. They're not reviewing research articles. They're re reviewing online learning objects. Uh, all the reviews that are done are done by subject matter experts. And we have a very formal rubric, um, just as journals do, but our rubrics have different criteria because they aren't papers that they're being that are being reviewed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, at the end of every year, just as in every journal, at the uh, last issue of the year, there's usually an appreciation list of reviewers. And uh, same here, we uh, appreciate the work that our our um, online material reviewers do, and so we send letters of appreciation at the end of the year either to them, to their department chairs, their deans, or to whomever they um, designate that they would like a review sent to. Uh, bless you, Barbara. Um, the, um, one, of our, one of our strengths, as I mentioned earlier, is our, our communities. And you can go and find this page that you're looking at here um, from our home page, where there's a tile called Communities. And I'm not going to go into all of these, but the three communities that are worth looking at now are academic discipline communities, the list I showed you already, academic support communities, and partner communities, of which you, you folks are one. <clears throat> There's a drop-down list for every one of these things. Here's a list of our uh, academic communities that I already showed you. By the way, if you link from any one of the elements in any of these drop-down lists, it takes you to a portal where uh, that's specific to that particular community. I'll show you that in a sec. Here are our academic support communities, and here this is a, a, a drop-down of what we uh, consider academic support communities. And then finally, our partner communities, <coughs> Excuse me, we have very, very many. And you can see that in the bottom of that drop down list, I highlighted uh, University, um, University System of Georgia. And if you were to click on that, that would take, take you to your own website. Um, here, well, I'll just keep going here. Um, this is an example of an academic discipline community portal for the discipline of engineering. This is an example of an academic support community where the, uh, where the subject matter is pedagogy. And this is an example of pedagogy translated into Chinese. The contents of all these portals um, are, are different, each one different from the other, and each one, and each one um, deals with the teaching of that particular discipline in an online fashion. So they're all different. You can see we have learners and learning, course instructional design, etc. cetera. Um, we're redesigning these portals completely. And this, I guess this is, these are two. Um, um, and anyway, we're redesigning these portals. This is a, you're getting an early warning um, that the portals are going to start to look like this after we've completed the work on this uh, redesign. Here's an example of a partner community portal. Uh, this one's in Hebrew, and, and there are many others, including your own. Now, I'm um, going to talk a little bit about mobile learning because it's a, 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 a big effort in Merlot. We have, you want to talk about this? <coughs> Go ahead. Um, <coughs> Years and years ago, we started off with the uh, mobile app for the BlackBerry, and that quickly uh, got pushed aside, and we created uh, two other apps, obviously, for the iOS and Android. And you can go to either uh, the iTunes Store or Google Play and just do a search for Merlot OER, Mer Merlot OER search, and you will find those apps. You can search the collection from the app. You, if you find something, you can either look at it on your browser or you can email it to yourself or a colleague to look at later. And so uh, Merlot is always on the go. Oops, I keep saying the wrong thing. 
Uh, we also have a what we call a Merlot apps, M mobile apps Merlot or Ma Merlot, which is a website or portal that has been uh, produced with our partner on the Tennessee Board of Regents and the Cal State system to provide a place to find all the different mobile apps for learning and teach for teaching and learning. And uh, TBR also has a website that uh, has that they, they call mobilization and emerging technology. They've got, uh, I think, close to 100,000 apps or, or something like that. I think I heard Robbie Melton say at our conference a couple of weeks ago. And so uh, uh, two great resources to find more mo mobile apps outside of Merlot. Now, Sorrell's going to talk just briefly about our web services. In general, web services is a term that uh, is the same as APIs, application programming interfaces. A web service is a little bit of code that allows for the interfacing of web-based applications. So uh, you can see it here, the second bullet, we have um, web services or APIs that enable all these kinds, all this kind of functionality. What that means is if you have a web application or a portal and you don't want to come to Merlot to do a basic search or any of these other things, then it's possible using our interfaces uh, to embed our web services into your application so that you can do any of this stuff that's listed here directly from your application rather than having to go to Merlot.org. Here, here is uh, how the alternative, if you look across the top, there's a person on, uh, well, it's a typewriter, but it's supposed to be a computer, who can access the Merlot functionality in the, the Merlot functions in the Merlot database through our Merlot.org. Alternatively, if, a, if an organization, this one happens to be um, in, in, in uh, Chile, they want to build their own application, their own interface in Spanish, then the user can go to their interface, their portal, where wherein all our web services are embedded, and they can get into the Merlot function and the Merlot collection without having to be encumbered by the Merlot, uh, the www.merlot.org. Here are some examples of uh, organizations that ha are using our web services. <clears throat> yeah. um, Soft Chalk is a commercial organization for the development, that use their software for the development of OER and um, embedded in SoftChalk in their package are some APIs that allow you to search Merlot as well as their own repository. Um, Merlot's uh, interfaces also work with these different LMSs so you can access Merlot search uh, from directly from within these LMSs. Um, <clears throat> Here is, uh, here's, I already mentioned this, this is the, a member of our, another member of our consortium, such as you. This is uh, Chile. In Chile, they have formed a consortium, it's called INACAP, and the purpose of that consortium is to um, uh, encourage and, and uh, get all the community colleges in Chile to use OER in their instruction, and this, um, that consortium is a partner, direct partner with Merlot, and you're looking at the INICAP Merlot application. This is another example in Hebrew, same, same structure, organizational structure as INICAP, only this is in Israel where all the, all the universities and colleges have formed a, a partnership there and they are, like you, a, a, a consortium partner of Merlot. <coughs> um, yeah, there's another one. What was it? Oh yeah, that's us. Oh yeah, there you are. Sorry. <laughs> right, in case you didn't recognize it. <laughs> Thank you. And now um, Barbara will talk about our authoring tool called the Content Tool. And this, I'm going to just go through this really quickly. This could be another webinar and I'd be happy to do it at another time for anybody interested in creating web pages and websites using our, our tool, the Content Builder. 
So I apologize in advance for going through this in about three or four minutes. Uh, again, another reason to become a member of Merlot, you have access to this tool. This used to be the Keep Toolkit through the Carnegie Foundation, and a couple of years ago, they decided not to be in the business anymore of, of this, and we took it over, inherited their users and, and their users' pages, et cetera. And so uh, in Merlot now, again, on this Add to the Collection page, there is a tile that says Create Materials with a Content Builder. It's also on our home page, and so if you click that, you are taken to a page where if you've never done this before, the first time you'll have to create what we call an alias, and that's a username that will be part of all your pages that you create. But if you click on the uh, top link here, create web page, uh, you'll see that a, you'll see in a minute that a web page is made up of just a series of boxes arrayed on a page, and we have different templates that we've created to help making to to help in the process of creating a web page, easy, making it easier. And so um, we use different terms, public and publish. You can create a web page in Merlot and just keep it private or share it among other Merlot members. You can send a web page that you create through Merlot to other people. If you're collaborating on something perhaps and you want to create something, uh, you can work on it, send it through Merlot to somebody else. They can work on it, send it back to you. So it provides an easy way to share. Once you're ready for other people to see it, you make it public. You can also later down the road, if you've created a learning object, you could publish it or contribute it to Merlot. And so this is an example of one of our templates. So this is a, a mobile learning template. And so what we've done is we've put in each of these boxes, we've given you tips or asked questions on things that you could put into these boxes. You can also link to documents, video, link to videos, uh, put images into these web pages as well. And uh, as I said, we host all these these uh, web pages. This is just a very rudimentary one that was created uh, to go along with the material that was put into Merlot. Here's another one that somebody uh, created. You can change background colors, text colors. And once you have more than one web page, you can link them together and create a whole website. And we provide navigation for you on the right, the left, the top, however you want it. And you could just click on each of those and it will take you to a different page. And so um, to this point, we've really shown you that Merlot is, a, a, is really a platform to build on. Some of these things in this slide here we haven't gotten to. Uh, our affordable learning solutions, our Cool for Ed project. Um, we're going to go through those quickly as well. Uh, but we just wanted you to see that Merlot provides the basis for uh, a wonderful opportunity for uh, finding and using learning materials and learning objects. So, um, lost this. Um, the, 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 the two main functions that um, can be used to build larger projects are the content builder and our web services. And here are four projects that are currently underway. I, I just want to say something before this uh, in terms of uh, Merlot philosophy. Up until maybe a year ago, we focused largely on Merlot functionality, uh, the kinds of things that Barb has shown you in the tour through Merlot. It's only in the last year that we've come to realize that there are bigger things that can be done and built using all that, uh, those primitive functions, let's say. And that's, that's the reason why I showed um, that, uh, that, that oil, what's that, called? that oil rig that we can build uh, these kinds of projects on. So let me just quickly run through. <clears throat> we have this thing called the Cool for Ed, or Barb calls them Cool Fred. Uh, this is an open textbook uh, project that is running in California. And actually, we know that there are these kinds of things all over, all, starting all over the country, in fact, all over the world, making affordable, making open access textbooks available to students uh, to replace the high cost of text. And here is an example, here is the Cool for Ed um, uh, uh, website. And I just want to show you that in this Cool for Ed website, what we're doing is faculty who are using textbooks across the state of California 
are using the content builder to build e-portfolios to tell their colleagues how they're using the particular textbooks in their course so that other colleagues can read um, their e-portfolio and find the same thing. Also, in this Cool for Ed website, we're able to search open access textbooks directly related to particular academic disciplines. <clears throat> Another project in California is called the Course Redesign with Technology. Um, the purpose of this project is to reduce the bottleneck to graduation by improving student readiness for academic success. It's essentially funding faculty in California to develop technology-based courses that will uh, hope for uh, facilitate student graduation. And these faculty are building course portfolios and also using the content builder to build websites that they're able to share with other faculty around the state so that these, these e-portfolios and these um, content builder sites are available and shareable by other faculty in the state. <laughs> Affordable learning solutions you're quite familiar with. We have a lot of partners around the country who have affordable learning solution programs, and this site uh, has a few, um, a, a few portals showing what they, who some of them are. Another big project that we're undertaking is with the U.S. Department of Labor. It's called TACT, and uh, only the federal government could come up with an acronym like this. But um, and what TACT is, is the funding of community colleges to develop courses that have to do um, with, uh, to, to, to prepare students for, as it says here, high wage, high skill occupations. So they're developing community college level skills training courses and um, those courses would be shareable by other faculty throughout the country. This shows you the Merlot's involvement. Currently, we have the Merlot website that searches the Merlot repository. We also have the content builder where we, we, we actually store the Merlot courses that are, excuse me, the content builder courses, and we store the metadata so that courses that are created and made public in the content builder are discoverable in Merlot. And with TACT, we're doing another thing. We're building a DSpace instance where courses are going to be or are being created by community colleges. Those courses will be stored in the DSpace repository. Their metadata will be stored in the Merlot repository so that people can discover um, these courses through Merlot. And this is a project that's ongoing now. It's not uh, some kind of fantasy. Um, <clears throat> you want to talk about this finally, Merlot X? Sure. Uh, so we have another website, MerlotX.org, and this is really designed for students to access Merlot uh, resources. It's what we call a student portal, and it's designed. Oh, I keep hitting the wrong one. And it's designed. Uh, like I said, to let you, to help students find uh, learning modules and textbooks and journals uh, in Merlot in a quick and easy way. And you'll notice I've highlighted here uh, free online study groups. There's a, a company called Open Study that has a, a resource for students that are seeking help in real time. And if you go to that website, um, <clears throat> There, depending on what subject category you're looking for, you can find people who are available, to, students can find people who are available to help them right on the spot with any issues that they might have in a course. And through our different portals where there is a, a matching subject category, we've provided a link so people can get right to it. Um, I'm just going to touch real quick on social networking in Merlot. We have something called Voices, which is a place to have community conversations on just about any topic you can imagine. We have a blog uh, that we uh, maintain and we usually have a, a new posting uh, every month. We also have a YouTube channel with different videos. We have a newsletter for people, a grapevine for uh, all our members that goes out three times a year. If any of you are on the on this call right now, our members, you should be seeing that in the next few days. 
as I said, threaded discussions for every material, and just like everybody else, Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. I'm not going to touch this page at all, other than to say we've got so much more. This is pretty much a summary of everything that we have talked about here today. Uh, the last thing is I want to just tell you a couple of things that are coming soon to Merlot. One of them is that you'll be able to search Merlot by an ISBN. So if you have a textbook and you know the ISB, and you have the ISBN number, uh, you can put that. You'll be able to put that into Merlot and get all the corresponding materials or complementary materials for that textbook that could help you, uh, your students and you in, in teaching the course. Uh, we also have a new feature called a course ePortfolio. And it is a way to uh, kind of the start of a syllabus where you can define your prerequisites, uh, your pedagogical approach, all the resources that are going to be used in a course, and list them all here. Every, every course ePortfolio and bookmark collection in Merlot has a unique URL. And you'll see down at the bottom, this is where you'll be able to search for an ISBN. Uh, it'll be released uh, sometime this summer. And once you do a search, this is the way you'll be able to put those materials in. Again, this is all in development, but we wanted to just give you a quick uh, look at it. And if I can leave you with one thing for all of you that are not members of Merlot, uh, please go and join now. We have lots of great uh, resources and benefits for you as, as a Georgia partner that you can take advantage of. If you have any questions about anything that you've heard here today, we know that we went through this very, very quickly. Uh, please feel free to email barb at merlot.org or sorrel at merlot.org, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, if you, again, I know I really went over the content builder quickly. That could be a, a webinar in itself. If anybody's interested in that, let Jeff know, and we could set something up. And the last thing is that if, I'll just open it up to questions here if anybody has any questions. Thank you so much. Um, I have muted quite a few of you because of the um, ambient noise going on. So if you find that you can't unmute your microphone, just feel free to type in your question into chat. Uh, just make sure that it's sent to all participants so we can all see it. No questions. Well, in between, I'd like to take the opportunity to post one of my favorite pages from Merlot, which is the OER and accessibility site. Um, this has to do with not only finding universal, uh, kind of universally designed accessible OER, but also authoring it. And it's uh, a partnership between CSU, Merlot, the Open Education Consortium, and the National Federation for the Blind. So. That's a really informative site that I've been directing people to. And I'll just add to that, um, in Merlot, one of our metadata items is accessibility and whether or not there's an accessibility report. Uh, if somebody knows more, if somebody is, is versed in accessibility and knows more information about a material that they're submitting, they can fill in this form that tells you about the text and the color and the uh, screen resolution, and so somebody could get additional information about that, the accessibility of that information, and you can also search Merlot for materials that have such a form attached to them. Also, just to let you all know, this is an Affordable Learning Georgia training session, and we have upcoming events on the page that I just posted. Uh, we have a question from Sylvester Burton. Will this information be available offline later or sooner? Um, I will be getting the WebEx archive of this. This is recording at the moment. Um, as soon as I get the link to the streaming WebEx archive, I will put it on the page I just posted, the affordablelearninggeorgia.org slash events slash training page. Uh, you can also get to it from the home page of ALG by just mousing over events and clicking training and development. Um, you can see on there that we already have quite a few archives uh, of our past webinars. Oh, Merrill says, thanks, Merlot, folks. Well done. Uh, Merrill Penson, thank you, of Merrill. course. Oh, well, thank you. And I'm sorry, I had to mute so many. <laughs> Th 
Thank you, Barbara Tucker. Well, thank you um, to Sorrel and to Barbara for the presentation. It's been extremely informative. Even I learned some new things from this. And if you have any other questions, feel free to send them to uh, either Sorrel or Barbara or to me. I can always refer the question. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I will be stopping recording right now.